I had the pleasure of interviewing Belle Hernandez and her husband, Enrique Castillo. Oh my God, they are so wise and so savvy about the business. We spent so much time talking that I had to break things down into segments. Enjoy our second segment with Belle Hernandez and Enrique Castillo. When I started reading up about you, like doing my homework, <laughs> one of the things that I saw was that even though you have a really impressive acting resume, you also were producing. You also were creating stuff. You weren't waiting for anything to come to you. You're like one of the unicorns in the business. Because a lot of times you have actors who are waiting for the job, you know, and then they don't get it and they give a certain amount of time and then they leave. They they mm. don't understand that if you, if you want longevity in the business, you really have to start making your own way. And so was it organic for you to start doing that? Well, so much of the longevity really is based on relationships. Other artists have interest for, for the different disciplines, whether they're actors, writers, directors, or producers. And in building the relationships over the years, you come into contact with those people and they can inspire you to go in those directions also. Creative people, I mean, they, you know, it's like a magnet. And if you're an actor, for example, and you hear about a project, well, you're drawn in that direction because you want the work. And then slowly but surely, you begin to realize that a lot of the power as an individual really lies behind the camera, not in front of it. It's kind of rare, you know, that an actor can green light a film or produce a film or what have you particularly if you're a person of color. You have to kind of expand your area of participation and build relationships with actors, but with writers and directors. And then you, you pick up not just reading a script and somebody's script and you read it, but then you can also talk to the writer, the screenwriter, and they can tell you what inspired them and how to do this and how to write that, as well as producing. I mean, you, you pick up a little bit of everything. If you're observant enough, you could see how that camera's positioned and that one. And, you know, you talk to the people you know behind the cameras and just build relationships that can help you generate interest in other areas that will give you the longevity so that you can write screenplays, you can write novels, you can produce, and then you Eventually, hopefully, you meet people that have some, some you know, financing available and can help you uh, produce the, the, the passion that you have. Because we all have ideas. Everybody has an idea. This is the question is, how do you pursue the idea and take it to its fruition to eventually become whatever, a, a novel or a, or a screenplay or a, or a television show? You are creative. It, it's like there, there are people who they act but it it's all connected it's like i act i write i direct i produce it's not um encapsulated in one thing and, and i've heard this time and time again where you you meet actors and you go well, why don't you find a piece and maybe write something and do i'm just an actor i can't yeah, i don't do anything yeah. or, or musicians i mean i've met musicians too so well why don't you write your own music i just play the piano or i just sing great point was um and I didn't really think about this until she, she passed. Whitney Houston was an amazing singer. None of the songs that she made famous did she write. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have artists who stay in that one lane. They don't open up the lanes. You know, they, they go down this one little lane. This is what they do. But you have expanded your lane. You've got like a four-lane career that, you know, I'm going to go down this way and that way. For a young person who's listening or who's watching, what was your impetus to... To make the transition from one discipline to another? I have varied interests. You mentioned music, for example. When I was with El Teatro Campesino, I began to learn how to play the guitar and also watch Luis directing, Luis Valdez. All of that interests me. Every aspect of, of the arts interests me. Music in particular, I always wanted to learn how to play guitar. And so I watched somebody playing the guitar and I tried to emulate that. So on my own, I kept working and working and different relationships. My ex-father-in-law was an excellent guitarist. One of the actors in the, in the production that we did was a guitarist. And so I picked up, asked questions, and then continue to practice and practice. Eventually, I became a member of a music group in San Jose when I moved 
there from San Juan Bautista and the Teatro. And not only did I want to learn how to play a guitar, I also wanted to, to learn other instruments. And so I began doing that. Percussion instruments, I recorded with a, with a string bass. I played the string bass on one of the albums that I also helped produce. That one of the songs, our signature song now, is in a collection at the Smithsonian from the songs of that era, which is called Raices de Aslan, I think, Songs of the Chicano Movement. One of our songs is part of that collection. So I wanted to write music, I wanted to play music, and then not only did I want to be a part of the group, I also wanted to control what the group was going to do in recording, and so I took a multi-track recording class with the engineer for the Grateful Dead in San Francisco at Zotrope Studios on my own. I had been reading about the Salceros in New York and the issues they had with recording the conga sound. We had congas in, and bongo and percussion in our music. I made sure I asked the engineer what the best way to record it was and so he told me so that when we ran into the studio I was the one that knew every aspect of the recording process. That's what helped us save a lot of time. Yeah, but even then, you know, engineers, is like, ah, too many artists in here. <laughs> but eventually we recorded the album, and um, sometimes you can still hear it in the, with the music. I have respect for the different disciplines. That's why myself, I say I'm an actor. That's what I do. That's what I've been the longest. I'm not a musician. I'm not a producer. I'm not a director. I'm not an author. I've written one novel. I've written screenplays. I've written other stuff. But I have so much respect for those disciplines that I will not dare compare myself and include myself amongst those people. They put too much work into it, too much discipline, and some of them struggle for years. So here I come along and say, well, I wrote a novel. I'm an, well, although I'm an author. he's done, he, he did his production, Veteranos, A Legacy of Valor, award-winning production. It, it won an Imagen Award, so he's m kind of modest, and I understand what he means. That play, Veteranos, A Legacy of Valor, which is about Latino veterans, uh, Congressional Medal of Honor recipients, that don't really get the attention for the heroics. That's the highest honor that anyone can get in the military. So he did a production that also traveled all across the country. For all of the kids that were in that production, they say, even to this day, which was like, it's 10 years ago, even more, that's the production that they measure every other production that they do. Because it was really a beautiful production, which we're also trying to come bring it back. And we're talking to San Diego to see if we could take it back there. So when he says that, you know, he's he's modest, but he is a great director. So acting is your first love. But what I hear is that you easily can change hats. Your um, curiosity, because I think that's a sad thing also, <laughs> is that, you know, well, I, let, me, let me see how I can do that. Let me, maybe I can do that. I, I want to learn how to do that. To me, um, being able to know that stuff is part so you can protect the art. When you were talking about the music and you, you were reading up on how to record it, you wanted to ensure that the music came out exactly how you were playing it. How do you set it down? What on, does it take to do that? That's right. How, how do you do that? And I think that's real creative stuff. That's, that's like you're birthing a baby and you want to make sure that that baby has every possibility to come out well so I would qualify that by saying <laughs> writing a novel or a screenplay or producing something or directing or acting in a role is in no way comparable to buried a child <laughs> but I understand yeah, but yes you may not know what it feels like to be uh, to actually birth the baby but I I can I've tell seen you it. <laughs> but I can tell you that it, it, it has similar angst because you want to make sure it comes out right. You want to make sure everything is done. Yeah. And sometimes you have that baby, you have that script, you have that show, you have that movie, and it's not time yet for it to be born. Or somebody tells you it looks like Yoda. And you have to say, well, then I have a beautiful Yoda. Yeah. One of the things that I think I've learned along this journey of art and acting and music and comedy is that Nobody knows what your baby is but you. You have to nurture it and protect it uh, fearlessly. But you know, you said something you that's it. really important that I, I totally agree with, is when an actor doesn't have curiosity to learn 
what's around them, then that's when they become very limited. Because I remember being a dancer and then going into, uh, I helped with the production, the Golden Eagle Awards. And I and my dance troupe was performing that that evening. And they were all about themselves. They didn't care. Here where the production was having all this trouble. And I walk into the bathroom, they're going like, oh my God, you know, putting on their makeup and stuff. When are they going to be ready? You know, and it's like, they don't, people who don't understand and don't have the curiosity to learn will forever just be limited. And that's what you mean about actors. They need to know. They need to get out there and they have to have curiosity. How does a show get produced? You know, how do you write it? How does the camera work? Because that, like Enrique said, may lead to other things. Well, there's... It makes you grow. Um, you certainly need an ego in order to be able to function, particularly in this industry. But there is one thing to me that is that I've remembered and is very important, and that is love the art in yourself, not yourself in the art, which basically translates to be a little humble, you know, take your work seriously, but not everything they write about you that's good or what people say to you or want your autograph or whatever, that's, you know, okay, that's, that's great, it's validation of your efforts as an artist, and it's great, but don't just believe that it's always going to be like that, or that somehow you're the only person that's ever gotten that. So you have to have some sense of humility at the same time. The other thing that's important to me is the journey that I've that I've been on, it's only my journey. No one else has, has walked that path, although some have similar paths. And as a result, it makes me turn around and look around me and look at young actors and think, I don't want you to just have to go out for the kinds of roles that I was always having to go out to. So that's what motivates me to try and write things and direct things that is going to give them an alternative to do that. And the greatest joy for me has been to not only give young Latino actors an opportunity to play a hero, an American hero, a real person, who was maybe younger than them and sacrificed their lives so that we can enjoy the privileges that we have today. Not only is that important to me, but it is also very fulfilling to write a check to that actor, to say, here it is, here, and I want to pay you more than if you were on equity, because I'm, I've been there. I know what it's like to say, well, the crew got paid, well, the director got paid, and the actors, well, hey, I'll pay you if I can be in the production. To me, every discipline is important and it should be compensated. And a lot of people think, well, you know, the actors will do it. If he doesn't do it, we'll get another one. Okay, well, fine, get another one. I don't want to play like that. I don't, and I don't want my peers to be treated like that either. As second-class citizens, simply because they have a passion that somebody wants to exploit. And particularly people of color. So that's... That, to me, is very important, is to create work for Latino, young Latinos that can build on, on and, and get used to and have expectations that they should be playing other than the stereotypes. I hope you enjoyed this segment with Bel Hernandez and Enrique Castillo. And if you want, you can get more information on them from IMDb or latinheat.com. Until next time. Check me out on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hashtag keep common sense.